Welcome to my YouTube channel. Myself Bhavesh Patel from Vithalam Consultant. In this first video of air psychometry, I have discussed about two points. First, introduction of air psychometry and second, atmospheric air. So let's start. Air psychometry is the science and practice associated with atmospheric air. It is a method to control air temperature and moisture content as well as to understand the effect of temperature and moisture on material and human. Now in order to understand air psychometry, we must understand the properties of air. And in order to understand the properties of air, we must first understand the air. So the question is, what is air? Air, or normally we say atmospheric air, is a mixture of basically dry air and water vapor. Water vapor is also known as a moisture. Dry air actually does not exist. Dry air, which is a mixture of oxygen by 21 percentage, nitrogen by 78 percentage and balance 1 percentage consists of different gases like argon, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, helium, etc. As we know, at atmospheric pressure, boiling point or liquefying point of oxygen and nitrogen is minus 182.7 degrees Celsius and minus 195 degrees Celsius respectively. We can say that both these gases are highly in superheated conditions. Hence, we can conclude dry air is always highly superheated gas. So by adding heat in the air or removing heat from the dry air, only sensible heat is either added or removed. It means change of temperature only and there is no question of latent heat which is nothing but change of phase. And because of that, the effect of temperature as well as pressure can be easily understood. Hence, this is a simple concept. But in case of an atmospheric air, which consists of water vapor too, air psychometry becomes a little bit complex subject. Here there is a question. At atmospheric pressure, in the atmospheric air, why water is in vapor form? And why not in liquid form? Is the temperature of water more than 100 degrees Celsius and hence it becomes vapor? Certainly not. So in order to understand that, let me explain the Dalton's law of partial pressures, which states that for any mixture of gas, the total pressure is equal to the sum of partial pressures of individual gases of that mixtures. Here in our case, an atmospheric, atmospheric air, which is a mixture of dry air and water vapor. However, dry air, as I said, consists of different gases like oxygen, nitrogen, argon, carbon dioxide, etc. The total pressure of atmospheric air is equal to the sum of partial pressures of these gases. So the atmospheric air having a pressure of 101.3 kilopascal, it is equivalent to the sum of pressures from nitrogen, uh, first from oxygen which is 20.9 kilopascal, nitrogen 78.1 kilopascal, argon 0.97 kilopascal, carbon dioxide 0 0.05 kilopascal plus pressure exerted by water vapor that is 1.28 kilopascal and at this pressure that is 1.28 kilopascal pressure the boiling point of the water will be around 12 degrees Celsius. And that is the reason water in the atmospheric air will always be in the vapor form and not in liquid state. Apart from that, water is not only in vapor form, it is in superheated conditions because at 10 millibar, that is 7.735 mm of Hg absolute, saturation or we can say boiling point or boiling temperature of water is correspond to that pressure is 7 degrees Celsius. It means above 7 degrees Celsius water will always be in superheated conditions. Water vapor though in a superheated conditions by cooling 
it can be made to get in a saturated conditions and further cooling will result in the condensation of the water vapor. So this is the table related to pressures versus saturation temperatures of the water. You can see at a pressure of 9.2 mm of mercury absolute, sat absolute pressure, saturation temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. It means if the air temperature is above 10 degrees Celsius, then the water in the air will always remain in the vapor form. And we can say it is in superheated conditions at temperature of let's say 25 degrees Celsius. The pressure exerted by the water vapor in the air mixtures will depend upon the amount of vapor present or the percentage of the saturations. However, in any case, the vapor pressure cannot exit the saturation pressure of vapor at particular temperatures. In the next video, I will take this subject further. For such videos, like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel.